Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday night live stream. It's the first of 2021. I hope you all had a wonderful uh, festive period and you're ready to start the new year. As the titles of this video said, we are going to be painting some striking scorpions. Well, a striking scorpion, at least. Um, and yeah, as always, it's going to be same kind of principle for live streams. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments. Um, if you can just preface it with like a at question, or just so I can kind of pick those particular ones out, that would be super helpful. Yeah, so thank you very much for everyone who's joining me on YouTube or Twitch. And uh, today we're going to be painting um, this striking scorpion here. Now I might have to just change the, the camera settings a bit, I think at the moment it might be a little bit out of focus, but we'll see. I might tweak those a little bit. Yeah, I think it's about, let's, uh, let's get it sorted out. I should have done this before, sorry guys. Hopefully that should be a little bit better. Can we see everything a little bit better there? Yeah, that's better. Right, okay, so this is a, uh, as a few of you said, is here's a conversion. This will be um, another conversion that should be coming out. Um, hopefully Wednesday, I've basically made a uh, plastic version of uh, the Striking Scorpions using the Banshees, Halloween Banshees as a base and a few different uh, modifications made to it. So yeah, we're gonna be, um, that's what we're gonna be painting this evening. Um, so, let's just see. I'm just going to check that focus again because I wasn't holding the... Is that okay? That looks fine. Probably need to adjust the lighting a little bit. I might change that. It just It's not quite as bright. There we go. That's better. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to be airbrushing this to begin with. I'm obviously going to be uh, achieving that nice green... Um, color that the striking scorpions have. This is obviously been primed with black. This focus is terrible tonight. What's going on? Let me just try and tweak it a little bit more. Sorry, guys. If it's unbearable, I can change it anyway, so. Right, um, so the color that I'm gonna be using for this, sorry for the, uh, the little bit of a slow start there, guys. Um, so the color for this one that I'm gonna be using is some AK Interactive Paints. We're gonna be using um, dark green. This guy will reflect him really brightly there. So we're gonna use the AK Interactive third generation dark green. And we're using this through my airbrush. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's have a look in the comments to see what we who we've got in here. Um, I think we've seen we've got Josh Taylor in here, one of the uh, one of the channel members. Thank you for joining. Um, just popping a little bit of acrylic thinner in my airbrush here, just to. So this is AK acrylic thinner. I just like to use thinners which match the paint that I'm using. So using AK paints makes sense using AK thinner. Um, question: In your Iron Hands conversion, do you remember what power fist you gave the model? Iron Hands. Um, so five ways to convert Iron Hands, wasn't it? Um, what, what weapon did I give that one? I think that might have just been the standard Gravis Armor one, because I used the Gravis Armor um, Captain as a basis for that one. I think it might have just been the base, base one, if I'm not mistaken. Or was that the Iron Hands? Um, I don't know. I, th I think it was just the Gravis Captain one that I used for that. Okay. 
What are those things called that hold the miniatures? It's just a, it's just one of the old um, Games Workshop painting handles. Um, there is a new one, this kind of more rounded one as well that I do use sometimes. Um, well, I just had this to hand today. So I've started the dark green. I'm going to be using that as a base coat. We're going to be applying some um, kind of light strokes of green over the armor just to achieve that base color. That's pretty much what we're going to be doing in this video is going to be getting the base coats down. Probably won't be able to achieve much else. Um, so I'm hoping that this will actually, I do apologize about the compressor as well if you can hear that. I'm not sure if the camera, the microphone picks up. Um, but yeah, it should be thin enough, I think. So it's going to apply a really nice light layer. We're going to be focusing this from above. And I'm going to be building this up as we go along. I'm trying to focus it mainly from above just to keep those um, the shadows intact. And because I primed it uh, with black, then the shadows will appear to be black. and. It'll just help to boost the contrast, make the details stand out a little bit further. Just make sure we get all this green armor for now. That's all we want to do. Um, then we've got a question. Um, George, a question. How do you find the inspiration for your conversions and paint schemes? So it, it kind of comes from a mixture of different things. Um, if I'm making something that's completely brand new then like if, it, if it's a homebrew chapter something like that then sometimes inspiration will just come from something historical or a particular theme that I'm, i fancy doing if it's something that exists like the striking scorpion um how's that okay does it look a bit too bright is that okay with the uh i think that's kind of blowing out it's a blue cloth but it's like really getting blown out that's fine um with something like this, this kind of came out of necessity, mainly because the Striking Scorpions models are quite old, if I remember rightly. So um, I just wanted something that was a little bit more in line with the newer Aldar models, like the um, Dire Avengers and obviously the Banshees as a basis off. So yeah, it, it does really depend. It depends on model to model. Uh, in terms of paint schemes, again, if it's a custom job, then it just kind of whatever I feel fits, whatever looks cool, basically. Um, and if I'm going for a particular theme, it's whatever fits the theme as well. So I'm gonna leave that to dry up a bit. Just uh, pop this edge on the side. Greetings from Sweden. We have uh, Rick from Oklahoma. I think we had someone from Spain at the beginning as well. Um, hi, quick question. I followed your Aragorn on Three Hunters guide, which is great. Do you plan on doing one for Legolas and Gimli? Cheers, keep up the good work. It's been a while since I've done um, since I've done the Lord of the Rings content, I think the last one that I did for that, I think that might have been the last Lord of the Rings content that I did. Um, this looks a little bit blown out. Strange, the exposure's a bit odd there. Okay, that's better. I think uh, the trouble was I have switched kind of, I've updated my um, camera software and everything has kind of just been, all the settings I had before have been lost and I haven't got them saved. So yeah, we're doing this. Uh, yeah, so uh, back to what I was saying. Um, Aragorn 3 Hunter tutorial. Yes, I, I do still have the Gimli model and I do still have the Legolas model. And I actually haven't got them uh, assembled yet. Um, but yeah, it would have been it would have been nice to actually get those guys finished off the old trio. But yeah, it would have been uh, would have been, maybe I haven't done any painting tutorials for a while other than live streams. But yeah, did quite enjoy the Lord of the Rings one, and it would be nice to finish off um, the three. So I just gave that first layer a, a chance to dry. I'm just basically going back over now just to really kind of give some solid color to these upper areas. Again, I want to keep the darker recesses still, but I'm going to be building the lightness up here. And so having a bit more of a transition just look a lot better. Okay. So I hope everyone had some um, chance to do some hobbying over the Christmas period. Um, I didn't really get much chance to do anything personally. I did a few videos, um, which are a few, obviously the Skaven one. Um, the new series of the uh, guide to kit bashing as well, which I'm hoping to continue. 
some more kind of specific guides as well. So yeah. Okay, I think that's that's a good start. I'm just gonna apply a little bit under here. I don't want to be too dark on these bits. Perfect. Have you ever done a deep sea chapter, like a squad of divers that was damaged from deep sea ocean explosion? Uh, I think the closest one I did was the Dark Krakens, which is the, the Salamanders um, successes. They were the closest to kind of like nautical themed. I suppose their Gravis armor gave them an appearance of like these deep sea divers and obviously the harpoons as well. Um, August Hulse, could you use some more home brews? Yes, the, the hope is to do some ho more home brews. Um, Soon, I think I've got one One of them's in the works at the moment, so there will be some more coming soon. Um, if you haven't planned it, I'd love to see someday you do a conversion to make some new Dark Reapers or Warp Spiders. Yeah, that's that's kind of the hope here. So this, I, I started with Striking Scorpions because I wanted to see how uh, people would like the idea of, of kind of some more plastic aspect warriors. Um, so yeah, if people, people like it and I'm hoping, obviously, I'm not really sure about a conversion until it's painted. I never really can be 100% sure how well it's turned out until it's fully painted. So maybe if this goes down well, then I'll tackle the other aspect warriors as well. Okay, I think that's going to be enough for the time being. I think we can we can leave that color. So whilst I'm just going to leave that to dry, I'm just going to clean out this particular paint in here. We can move up to the next one. clean it out just a little bit in there and where's my mixing brush there it is that guy dusty how long does it normally take you to finish the mini now that really does depend so sometimes it can take a while um and other times it can be pretty quick so for example the ver the um space skaven model that i did um it was actually quite an easy one to paint. It was it was kind of mainly base coated with an airbrush, um, and then I just did some brush on brush on a few colours and some details with that. Uh, and I think I managed to do that one in an evening. It was pretty quick. Um, normally, I would, if I was painting for myself, I probably wouldn't go to quite the same detail, but because I want to really show off the model itself, I tend to do a slightly. Um, a slightly more detailed paint job. So for this one, this will probably take me, I'll probably do a, an hour or two in, on the stream. Um, and then that'll probably need another maybe hour or two off stream, depends really. This one's quite a simple, simple model because most of it's the same color. You've got obviously a few details. You've got the, the yellows to add still, um, some of the metals, some uh, areas of black as well. But for the most of the model, it's kind of green. So once I got this down, it's pretty quickly. And it's not quite as big on, um, it's like a space marine. So we've got Covaccio on 19 on Twitch. So thank you Covaccio for joining me on Twitch. Um, if you do have Twitch, then you can, you can join me over on there. Um, the link to that is in the description of the YouTube video, so. I'm keeping an eye on everything as well. Do you know any easy, um, how easy it is to paint thunder walls? Um, I would actually say it's quite easy because you can kind of just base coat them with a single color and you can kind of dry brush them then to get some nice, um, nice detailing in the fur. That's what I would do. So the next color that we're going to be using, so what color did I use there? I used um, dark green. So I think the next color I'm going to be using is uh, deep green slightly lighter so if i bring in the dark green you can see it's slightly lighter um this is kind of like the mid-tone of the striking scorpion so this is the shadows and this is the main color and then the, anywhere i go after that as a highlights so you can see we've got a light green there so we're going to start off with the the deep green which i think is a good color for striking scorpions so a couple of drops of thinner and then I'm going to be quite as I'm going to be applying quite as much this time, so I don't need to quite as much either. Just pop those in. Two drops. There we go. Perfect. And mix that up as well. How much does an airbrush cost? It really does depend. Um, 
so my, one of my first airbrushes was, was fairly cheap. Um, obviously an airbrush, you need to think about a compressor as well. Um, I would say, I can't remember off the top of my head how much this one is, but I bought a set which came with like a fairly decent compressor, an Iwata compressor and then an Iwata airbrush. And that cost me about 300, 300 pounds, I think it was. And that was like a starter set which came with like everything you would need. Um, but you can get some cheaper ones. I wouldn't go, ever go for the ones which are just basically um, like an, use an aerosol canister. I wouldn't bother with those. Um, get yourself a compressor, but you can get some pretty cheap ones. The cheapest ones won't be as good, but they're kind of a good way of getting into it, I'd say. So with this, this lighter green, I'm following the same principles as before. I'm kind of going from above, trying to build up those highlights. And this time I'm going to be covering a slightly less area. We want to create a transition from the dark areas underneath through to the um, dark green, then the deep green, and then the light green, which we plank in the next step. So just same kind of principles before. trying to keep this application light still just want to get something not too heavy not with the first layer at least okay. and you start to see the transitions appearing now and this will just help to build the details in the model as well I might go back over some of the details with just like a pure black just to really help them stand out, but for the time being, that's okay. What airbrush do you have? Um, so at the moment I'm using the PSI is a, around, I've got it set to the needles on 30, but when I'm actually spraying it drops a little bit below, so maybe about 27, 28. Um, the airbrush that I'm using is an Iota HPC Plus, and you can see that, Iota HPC Plus. And I can't actually remember what, I'm using one of the Studio Series um, compressors, so yeah. up a little bit sometimes that can happen just put a little bit more pressure through that perfect fixed just got a few more viewers over on twitch so thank you for everyone who's uh if you have anyone has joined over from the youtube side thank you very much keep the numbers up there as well um there you go that's a bit better so after the first layer, again, we're just going to hit it with the second layer. I'm not really going too crazy with these transitions. I don't want anything too strong. I'm going to be using the highlights for, the, for most of this anyway. I just wanted something that was a little bit more quicker way of getting some fairly decent highlights in here as well. Okay, so that's starting to get the transitions. You can see from the side there, profile, we can, we've kind of got something going on. So let's uh, carry on with going even lighter. And I'm going to be... Let's... Let's actually just add in some of the light green to this mixture here. I don't want to go full on with the highlight yet, so I'm just going to actually get empty out a little bit of that. And I'm going to create a roughly 50 50 mixture of the existing deep green that's in here and then some of the light green as well, just to give us a slightly less intense transition between the two. It'll help just to smooth it out. It also means I can use some pure light green with the highlights next. That's what I'm going to go for. When did everyone start the hobby? I was 12, just at the very tail end of second edition. Um, I started when I was about 12 as well, actually. The, I mean, if, you, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you'll, you'll notice when the, the Battle Games of Middle Earth magazine came out, and that really kind of what drew me in. So that would have been, I was 12, so 2003, I think it was. 
Yeah, 2003 sounds about right. Okay. Again, highlights just on the finest points this time. So the very tip of the helmet, the shoulder pads here, this arm around the backpack. I'm just gonna a little bit of the thigh there, across the chest, and then just on this calf and heel. Really simple, really straightforward, and that is done for the highlight for the uh, airbrushing stage. Just really, really simple, really quick um, base colors. There, we're going to start doing some highlights, which will help to bring out the details. Before we do that, though, I'm just going to drop a little bit of cleaner in here. I'm just going to run through that, and I'll leave that to one side for the time being. Uh, is the mini converted? It is indeed. It will. Be, I'll be releasing the full guide on how I did it um, on Wednesday. All being well. Siphon now. Um, just gonna dump that out. Actually, I don't want hanging around if I can help it. A little bit more cleaner in there. The biggest piece of advice if you ever start getting into airbrushing is always make sure you clean out your airbrush thoroughly. Um, the amount of airbrushes I've seen just die on people because they just don't clean them out. Take the effort and it will last a lot longer, trust me. Right, highlights. So I've got my wet palette here. Um, again, like I said, we're gonna be using the light green. So I've got a nice fresh sheet of um, wet palette paper there. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of this light green onto the palette. And I'm going to grab, let's start with the army painter brush for now. Good old trusty regiment brush. Wet that out a little bit. I'm gonna pop a little bit of water in there. Not too much, just a little bit. Also, I'm going to move this camera slightly just so I can get around here better. Everyone see that? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna be highlighting. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know the principle of highlighting, but if you don't, it involves picking out the edges using a lighter color. And what that'll do is it'll help those details to stand out further. You're kind of creating a really nice sharp edge. So when it's against a shaded, like a, a shadow, between like the armor piles, for example, it really helps to boost that detail. So the trick is to use um, a fine tipped brush. It doesn't need to be a small brush. A lot of people, me included when I first started painting, thought to do highlights, you have to use these like micro brushes. And you don't really, you just need to use um, one that can be, can achieve a fine point. So that's, that's pretty decent for that. Um, ben, from looking at it, it seems like a howling banshee with some scorpion bits on it. So this is actually all plastic. There are no metal or resin bits on here at all. Um, we have a, I'll go into more detail on the actual video, but obviously the howling banshee uh, body, head and arms are, are there. The weapon is from Zangors, the 40k Zangors kit. I have done some plastic rods for kind of like the, the, the hair here. And then I've also used some plastic rods to get these ridges in the armor as well. So that's basically the gist of it. Obviously the video will be going into much more detail there and explaining exactly which processes I took for them. But yeah, as a basic principle, that's how I achieved. So because most of the armor here is going to be green, we're just gonna be highlighting everything pretty much. Focusing mainly on the top edges, just because we want to continue that effect of um, of light coming from above. So Aldo on those armies which are a little bit trickier sometimes to paint because they've got a lot of rounded edges, like Space Marines have got very hard edges. So they really take highlights nicely, but these you have to be a little bit more careful with them. You kind of have to have a slightly steadier hand than you would do for something like a power armor or 
um, an orc or something like that, with which have much stronger edges. What would you say is your most ambitious conversion? Hmm. I really don't know, actually. I would say it's possibly one of the ones which are ambitious, trying to think now. That's quite a tricky one. I would personally say it's going to be one of the, the characters, one of the... Um, maybe Halbrecht. I don't necessarily think he's one of my best conversions in terms of what the result was. Um, I have done better than him. But I think in terms of the effort that it took and the amount of planning that it took to get him done, I think that's probably one of my most my ambitious ones. Either that or the Ravenwing um, Outrider. That was quite a big one. So you can see here, because I used a mixture of the light green and the deep green as the final highlight, even when I'm applying this pure light green over um, these upper areas, you can still see it. It's not quite as strong as it is further down on the darker areas, but it is still visible, which is what I wanted to achieve. It's also amazing how much of a difference the model makes, how, how much of a difference the paint job makes to the model's appearance, because up until I painted this green, it looked a lot like just a howling banshee. I was thinking, this isn't gonna look like a striking scorpion. Um, and it's amazing, as soon as you put the, the actual striking scorpion colors on there, how much it changes, how much it looks much better, um, in my opinion, as well. It's one of those nice things about model making is that the model comes together as you paint it, so, at first, quite a few times during a pro painting process, you can have a model that just doesn't look very good at all. And then it all starts to come together towards the end. It's always a nice feeling. <laughs> uh, we've 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 got uh, Ben back in the channel. I was waiting to waiting to see when you were going to turn up, Ben. Um, obviously, Ben has a bath at this time um, with his little rubber duckies and his his toy boats, of course. So you should know by now. It's Sunday, it's Sunday. You should be joining me on a stream. Question, Pete, what models will you use for the Primus Asriel if you do one? Well, I do have a plan to do him. I haven't got around to doing him yet. I'm not sure why I haven't got around to doing him yet because I actually know exactly how... Uh, sorry, I just read Ben's comment. Um, I I know I've got him planned out. I'm not going to be using... Um, is it Lazarus, the guy, um, the Dark Angels Primus character? He's going to be used as a basis. I've got all the bits ready for use on him. I just haven't got around to doing them yet. I don't know why. I should probably get them done soon because I can see at this rate the Dark Angels um, Codex supplement being released and the Beginner model being released for it anyway and it'll be like the flayed ones all over again. That's a point, actually. What color is the face mask on these guys? What have I got there? Got the picture open here. Um, oh, it's black. Okay, so the only difference is, is it the way that the mask is? So I might have to just kind of paint this whole area black, I think. Um, I might have to just kind of fix that in the uh, paint job. Yeah, we'll see. Is this uh, a resin model, or would you manage to do it with conversion with plastic bits? It's a uh, plastic model, um, or that's plastic, no metal, no resin, no 3D printed parts, or um, games with components, or plastic rod. So yeah. Killjoy, that's so nice to see a smudge, not crystal, just to see a quick scuff and fix. Keep up the great work. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Whenever you're painting, you're going to make mistakes. Nothing's perfect. The amount of times that I've um, messed up a paint job and had to go back and fix it is just countless. 
I think anyone who paints, I mean, even Games Workshop, they actually, funny enough, one of the, um, if you go on the Games Workshop website now and you open up one of, you go through the images and I think if you go to like the third, fourth image that's got a striking scorpion and a 360 spinny, if you spin it around to the back, you can see that on the left side there are two, um, there are two like ridges around about here on the model and obviously they've painted them white and then painted them yellow afterwards but they've missed out these two ridges here so there's two little white ridges just there on the model. So even Games Workshop make mistakes on their official heavy metal miniatures. So yeah, there will be mistakes. And to be honest as well, most people probably won't be looking at... Um, like I, I kind of have the added pressure here of painting a model that's going to have a 360 spinny shot in HD. It's going to be a lot closer. You're going to be seeing the model blown up to about two, three, four times its actual size on your screen. So all those little imperfections and details are going to be showing through even more. So I kind of have to preempt those. But if you're painting something just for yourself, just for the tabletop, you can get away with a lot more. Doug362, I think my question got missed. I asked on Twitch about Forge World earlier. Um, yes, I do apologize. I might have missed that. If you just um, ask it again, I will. I will uh, watch. I will answer it. Hey Peter, is it printed model or third party? Um, it is neither. It is conversion. It is entirely converted from Games Workshop kit and plastic rod. So we will be seeing this being built um, in a tutorial on Wednesday. All being well. So basically this year what I'm what I'm trying to do in, in 2021 is to kind of not completely move away from it, but to just kind of expand my conversion horizons a little bit. Try to do a little bit more Xenos stuff, try to do a little bit less just Space Marines. Um, there will still always be Space Marines. Space Marines will always have a home on this channel just because they're so easy to convert and I enjoy doing them. Um, but yeah, there will always be... Um, there's going to be a lot more Xenos conversion. So this is obviously, this one is Wednesday's video. Um, I've been working on a, on a conversion today as well. I'll quickly show you. A, a Skink Warchief, so a plastic one. I don't think there actually exists a plastic Warchief, so I've used the Star Priest and just added a few extra bits on here. So yeah, just a little bit of a different, just a bit of an Age of Sigmar model as well. So yeah, just trying to expand my horizons with the old conversions there. Um, so how would you go about making a male version? I mean, you could probably just, because Aldar, I think the physiology is very much the same from, from male and female. You could pretty much just shave down the chest there and use that. Or like someone else said, you could pretty much use the same, because the armor is very similar, you could use the same techniques I'll show in the conversion video um, and apply them to like Dire Avengers or Guardians or something like that. You don't necessarily need to use a Howling Banshee here. Um, it does make it easier because of the arms, because obviously they use close combat weapons as do striking scorpions, so it makes it a lot easier to swap out the weapons. But yeah, it's not impossible to do a male version. But Eldar are a bit like a, a bit different in that regard. So it kind of doesn't really matter if it's like male or female. They tend to be like a, a fairly even mixture, at least compared to things like um, the Imperium, at least. Trying to make out what I actually okay, so that doesn't need that's gotta be yellow later on. So I need to highlight these feet here, these little toes. Just a little bit around the toes as well. And we can do Doug 362. Are there any Forge World super heavy units you would love to paint if you haven't already? Um how would you paint them? It doesn't necessarily need to be for the channel. I really liked the, the Death Corps of Krieg vehicles, like the Super Heavy, I think it was like the Mastodon, I think was one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Or Malkador, is that it? I don't know. Anyway, some of the really nice, big, kind of chunky Death Corps of Krieg vehicles. I think that's, they're the ones I'd go for, personally. Um, I'd probably go for like a really nice, um, 
heavy weathering effect on there. There are lots of like mud and weathering pigments and things like that just to really make them fit into that Deathcore of Krieg style. Okay, how's this arm going here? So there's like a bicep that needs to be picked out. And this armor here across the forearm. The sword looks so disproportionately big. It's the uh, it's a chain chain axe, so yeah. But that's that's forty k for you. Everything is ridiculously big. I mean, look at this guy. Look at, look at how big this guy's rifle is. I mean, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's about as tall as he is. It's actually taller than he is. I'd say. Yeah, it's incredibly odd. Um, yeah, forty k isn't known for its its ideal proportions, to be honest. There's a lot of little edges here, which are very difficult to pick out sometimes. So you just got to kind of be very careful, trying to miss any. I'm sure I will do though, and we'll have to go back and do some later on, but that's fine. There's no rush. It sounds like you mean the Markador, they look like the British Wars. Yeah, that's pretty much the one I was looking for. Um, yeah, I'd say there's, there's pretty some pretty nice vehicles. I'd definitely go down the vehicle route for those. Would you ever consider making a conversion for the fan-made chapter of the Blood Jaguars? There are Space Marines with an Aztec theme. Yes, I have seen those, actually. They're quite a nice, um, interesting theme. They kind of... Um, obviously, there's a lot of lizard men parts that you could use for those. So in terms of feasibility, in terms of actually building the conversion, then, yeah, you could definitely... I could definitely manage doing those in the future. Um, whether I will or not is a different matter. There's so many chapters to tackle. I still need to do Black Dragons. I get asked about that every other day, it seems. Um, I will have to tackle them at some point. I just haven't really found a way of doing them anything. I'm doing like a conversion that doesn't just involve just the bone spikes. I kind of think, how can I create an aesthetic for these guys that doesn't just involve that? So yeah, it's quite a tricky one, that one is. Pick out some folds in the cloth here as well. Okay. If you're painting the striking scorpion in a dark black scheme instead of green, how would you go about doing it? Um, I think I think I would probably still involve some green in there just to have it so that it kind of follows on from the typical striking scorpion scheme because obviously the aspect warriors, at least from my understanding, seem to have more of a um, consistent color scheme even across the different craft worlds. Um, but what I would probably do is I would start with black. I'd go with like a really dark gray, something like Corvus black, um, Vallejo's um, black gray or Army Painter's Necromancer cloak. And then I would add some like pale yellow to that makes you just to create some highlights so it'd be very black but then why i would do these ridges here that i'll be painting yellow on this miniature i would actually paint those green and it kind of helps to tie things back um to the original kind of classic color scheme as well then Left, there is no dead animal bits on this model, unfortunately. Um, I did manage to get some of my little little skink war chief. That I managed to get a little little orc skull on the ground there, just to add a little bit of variation to the um, the basing style there. But yeah.
Uh, they usually call it the Aspect Shrine, not the Craft World yet. So that that obviously would mean that they, regardless of the Craft World, they're always going to be green. But I think it'd be interesting to do just like a slightly different colour, maybe. I don't know. You could, you could probably find some sort of way of explaining that away in um, game terms. Maybe they are a special format. One of the things I've actually... Like, I saw somebody sharing a, a Blood Angels army. And obviously everything was red, but then there was like a, a kind of an elite force in there. It was painted like a sandy color, which just had a little bit of red in there, which was quite nice. Um, but yeah. It's quite interesting to see different color schemes from time to time. Peter Nater. Ben Ives, British Racing Group. Funny enough, I used to have a um, Rover 200 was my first car. It was an R-Edge Rover 200. Um, and one wing was slightly different color than the rest of the car. <laughs> and it um, cost me about 200 quid. And that was British Racing Green. So, yeah. Not quite as light as this. A little bit darker, I'd say. Probably, um, what would I say it would be? Probably about kind of in between those those two colors, I would say. I literally just drove that to the fall apart, pretty much. What's your favorite Marvel movie? Um, oh, interesting one. I would probably say Thor Ragnarok is probably one of my favorite ones. I would say that's probably, I liked the style that they took with that one. It was a little bit less less formulaic than some of the other ones, some of the other the films that we've seen. Yeah, I quite like that one. <laughs> Christ, how old actually are you? I'm. I'm 30 in a couple of months actually um, but my Rover 200 I started driving it was about 10 years old when I started driving it so yeah um, so yeah it's not that old it's an old man car but yeah um, the roads were comfortable and slow like driving a sofa yeah pretty much they, they genuinely were it was it was a 1.4 litre engine but it was like the, the acceleration was just terrible on it I don't think it's it's old but it, honestly, it was a really comfortable car to be in. It had like it was quite nice and spacious for like a small hatchback. Um, and I don't know why this shows suddenly turning into a discussion about. Um, I feel like it's it's kind of turning to Top Gear at this stage. Um, but yeah, that that was my first car. It was, it was pretty decent actually. It was surprised. It was one. It was the kind of car as well that you could quite easily fix. It wasn't one of the ones which was ridiculously all electronic and. Um, I mean, it did break a lot, and it, it did need to have a lot of repairs, but it was all right. It did, it did the job. Fairly cheap to insure because it was such an old man car, so I wasn't paying through the nose because I had a, a Corsair or something. Yeah, it's all right. Quite sad to leave that one. I think a treat. I, I part exchanged it for uh, another car, and I got about 50 quid for it. It was a it was a fully drivable car. The only thing it didn't have um, it failed its MOT, so it only it had like a, a few weeks left on its MOT. And I got a, a part exchange on a car, and I got about fifty quid for it. It was it was ridiculous. So Pete, would you ever like to make Xenos servitors or like Orc or Terran servitors? There's three D alternative companies whose but yeah. But how would you make any? Um, so I think first of all, I'd probably have to think about how that would occur. Um, I don't know if, if pure admech would, would ever do Xenos um, services, but I do think that there are aspects of them who um, would do maybe like the splinter elements of them, maybe Dark Mechanicum. I think Dark Mechanicum would use pretty much anyone, so that would be an interesting to take on that. But I've always liked the idea of, of um, tyranids that have been cut off from 
the hive mind and they're kind of end up being bioweapons like controlled like they have something wired into their brains and um, what they think is the hive mind is actually some Skatari Alpha controlling them instead. Pretty cool. Pretty fun to do. So this thing, this bottom little chin guard needs to be green here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so that's going to have to be green, and the rest of it's going to have to be black. So I'm going to pick that with green. <laughs> when you're a big time YouTuber, you get a classic rover for nostalgia purposes. Um, I could probably just get one now, Ben. Honestly, I think I've seen them at scrapyards for about... You can probably get them just on... I think it's only worth the weight in scrap metal right now. Um, it wouldn't be too too expensive to get one. But yeah, maybe maybe I should get one. And I'll, I'll paint it Pete the Wargamer green, which is actually this colour. So yeah. Um, get it resprayed. Paint it in the uh, Pete the Wargamer livery. Turn up at conventions in it. There are examples of Xeno servitors in Forges of Mars. There are some Orc servitors. Ah, okay. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Bangi, Pete, how close are you to affiliates on Twitch? I am currently affiliates. Thank you very much. I, um, I think... Just before Christmas, I think did a, the last stream that I did before Christmas pushed me over the edge. Pushed me over the edge? Sounds really drastic. It <laughs> pushed me over the, the threshold um, for being uh, an affiliate. So yeah, I think I'm an affiliate now. I can do things like... I don't know, I, I don't know if you can subscribe anyway. I can do hydrate chat tokens and stuff like that. I genuinely don't have any idea how, I, how I'm using Twitch half the time. It's, it's still very um, very alien to me. Yeah, so thank you for everyone who had joined my um, Twitch stream in the past and allowed me to get the, the criteria for affiliates. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. But also thank you to everyone who, who joins me on YouTube as well. Okay, so let's... Uh I think we're getting there with, with, I'm looking at the models, not many areas that I want to highlight that I haven't done so already. Um, it's just this, this little bit down here. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everywhere. I think I can move on to doing uh, an extreme highlight now. I think everything's pretty much done for the time being. Let's just get this, that's fine. Yeah, okay. So, as always, we're going to be bringing in the classic pale yellow. Maker's Call is currently making mechanids with a concept very similar to what you described. Yeah, I think I've, I'm sure I've seen a conversion form in the past. I can't remember where I've seen it. Um, it was just one of those ones where you're scrolling through Facebook or Reddit or something like that. But yeah, I, I would like to do something along those lines. I think that's probably the easiest kind of tyrannic conversions to do. Just because every, anything organic with Tyranids is, is obviously a little bit trickier. One of the things that I actually like the idea of, I think someone mentioned before in, um, I think it was just in a comment stream somewhere, of what, of how Tyranids, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's still canon anymore, but I know it used to be the, the case that a lot of Tyranid units were formed after a high fleet had um, ingested a DNA of a particular race. So. Things like, I think it was Biovores who had Orc DNA, and obviously Gene Sears had Human DNA. Um, uh, Tyrant God had Space Marine DNA. Um, Zoanthropes were Algar DNA, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and what it would like to see something like a, a, a Grey Knight, um, like a Grey Knight kind of absorbed Tyranid, so it would be like particularly effective at fighting demons or something, which I think they already pretty much are because they have the shadow and the warp, don't they? So, yeah. I don't know if they're still canon, actually. I haven't really kept up to date on recent Tyranid um, codexes, so I'm not 100% sure. If someone is an expert on Tyranids and current, current 40k universe, then I'm sure you can elaborate.
thank you, Banger U. Um, yeah, I did really like the. Uh, I really enjoyed doing those space scaling. Like I said, I want to do more of those kind of less space marine, more kind of Xenos, more maybe some more chaos stuff as well. Actually, that'd be pretty cool to do. I haven't really done much in the way of chaos. So to explain, I just mixed some um, pale yellow, you can barely see it there, but some pale yellow um, with some light green, just to make this like even paler green. I'm just using some small spot highlights just to pick out some of the, these um, more prominent details just towards the top of the model. Just to help them stand out a little bit more. Let's consult the hive mind and see if anyone's, um, has anyone, so we've had somebody say, uh, Tyrant God have some Astartes in them. Yes, definitely. When in doubt, dab. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> um, I don't know if, you, if you're on YouTube, I don't know if you can see the, um, see what Bangi is putting there, but I, I've got the little dead animal bits as a little, Twitch emoji on there if you uh, so I think if you subscribe I think it's available I believe or if you use you can buy it with I don't know the hydration tokens I don't know Twitch I'm not going to pretend to know Twitch I'm not a cool kid um, let's follow the guide on YouTube and how to set up Twitch <laughs> kind of irony there Okay, so I don't want to go too heavy with this one. Just a little bit of light, light spots about. Okay, I'm quite happy with that so far. Um, a little bit there just to enhance that and just a little bit there. Okay, so let's move on to the yellow. I might come back to the green if I find areas I've missed, but for the time being, I think it's okay. What might you do for a kit bash or conversion for Tau? That might be interesting to step away from Space Marine. So um, I would like to do a full guide for the... Guron Vesa that I did in a stream um, a few weeks ago. I like to do like an actual full, get this guy painted up and everything as well. I do a full conversion guide for that. Um, but also one of the things that someone suggested before was doing some Farsight, Farsight Enclave. Um, mainly because um, I think they're going to be the most different. The most different from the Tau Empire. They're kind of like obviously a splinter group from the Tau Empire. So I would imagine their technology is maybe different. They've gone a different way with things. Uh, you could get away with doing some more um, interesting stuff with them. Okay, so we're going to be doing some of the yellow stripes. Now, I was kind of not really sure about how to do this, but I thought what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with like a nice um, orangey yellow. So I'm going to start off with deep yellow from AK Interactive. Pop a little bit that over there. Just dropped a bit on the table by accident there. Better pick that up before I get my hand in it. There we go. Um, and then I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of this deep orange in there as well. Just a tiny amount, just to give me a little bit of a darker starting shade that I can build up from. See, that actually had quite a lot in there. I'm glad I didn't do any more. Yeah, I think that's a perfect color. It's very, it's just kind of like a nice orangey yellow mid color. Can you see that? It's off the camera. There we go. That's what I'm going to go for there. You need to have kids so they can tell you how all this newfangled streamy stuff. Yeah, I can just. Uh, I do have a sister who's a lot younger than me, but I don't think she's she's into streaming, so I don't think she'd know. Um, <laughs> Pete shows the bottom of your paint water cup again. So this is the, um, after adding the green, I've got this like really nice radioactive um, color in there. We've got, you can see the black. Obviously that's the black from the primer that I applied earlier on. And then we've got the green here that I've emptied out. So yeah, it's kind of like a, got a nice radioactive aesthetic going on. So the, pe the paint cup. Uh, how deep is it at the moment? Let's see. Oh. There you go. 
That's how deep the paint is today. <laughs> I'm hoping to get it to the top and then maybe I'll do a stream where I empty it out and take the whole thing out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. I mean, to be honest, it's just paint water, so I mean, it's literally just a mixture of paint and paint airbrush cleaner. There's nothing else in there, so it doesn't smell. It doesn't have any kind of anything organic in there, so it's not going to rot or anything. So um, it just sits in a drawer out of the way. Just don't accidentally to pour tea in that one. I mean, I have to be pretty out of it to drink tea out of that one to be honest I'd be, I'd be worried very I'd be more worried about what state I was in to drink tea out of that one than what I would be after drinking tea out of that anyway um, I'm going to be using this this kind of like nice orangey yellow just to pick out some of these uh, ridges so these ridges are what I've added in I use plastic plastic rod for these um, I've added these over the over the legs here I did a couple on the back as well I'm just going to apply this as a base color to begin with, and then I can go with the, the brighter yellow later on. This looks a little bit hazy. Have I got like a bit of a, a bit of a smudge on the screen? Yeah, that's better. I think it must have been a smudge on the screen or something. That was weird. Um, yeah, so these are quite iconic, really, for striking scorpions. So I really wanted to make sure that I added these on. And it took me a while to figure out how to get these done right. Um, I was going to use some Procreate, some green stuff, kind of putty. But then I just thought I'd use some um, plastic rod. I think it's turned out quite nicely. Can I have that cup? I have petition Pete to have never washed that cup. Uh, do a giveaway for the contents. I, yeah, I think people would actually probably take that as well. Um, probably call us LRU. It's a shame it's so old. Yeah, I would agree. I do really like striking scorpions, which is why I actually went and did them. For, I'd say either them or dark reapers are my favorite looking ones. I don't know what they're like rules wise, but still. Um, striking scorpions are probably cool. So the aspect warriors, I agree. Helen Banches are somewhat overrated. Yeah, I kind of went, when I saw that they had been given an updated model, I was a little disappointed. I think one of the other aspects could have been, would have been better. I also like them, I can't remember what they're called, they're like ghost something, the, the ones that Forge World do. They look pretty cool. They're kind of like these, uh, they, they kind of float around and have this like bulky armor, got like jetpacks or something. I'm sure the comments hive named will um, find out what they are. I always call them ghost specters. Uh, warp spiders are pretty cool too. They flicker jump through the warp just to get up in your face with the shotgun. Yeah, the, the warp spiders were pretty cool. I remember that scene, I think it's Dawn of War 2, the opening um, opening cinematic for that one. They're basically kind of, you've got the space room with the heavy bolter and shooting it and then the um, the warp spider just keeps kind of jumping back and forth and then appears on like a, a rock behind him. What shoulder pads are those? The shoulder pads are taken from the house Van Saar Necromunda kit. I was honestly really, really struggling to find some shoulder pads and then I just literally opened up a box and had some Van Saar shoulder pads in there. I was like, that's perfect. It's got the stripes. It's about the right size. Perfect. Um, so I really dropped on with those ones. To... Just 
just need to double check what else is yellow on these guys. Um, so there's some yellow stripes on the blade. Um, hmm, might be a bit difficult to do those. Shoulder pads are yellow and also, yeah, so I haven't done quite as many ridges. Okay, these little bits here are yellow as well. That's interesting to, to know. I'm guessing the cloth would be yellow as well. I don't know if any of the existing Eldar um, striking scorpions have those. The Exarch, is it Exarch? The leader, unit leader. Um, I'll probably go for yellow for that one as well, just because it's the kind of, it's the color of the model. Let's go for yellow. Uh, I have some versions of them can be used as sweeping hawks as well since they are the same color scheme. Yeah, I do quite like those more. Dark Reapers are such edge lords, love them though. Aldo are definitely going to be my second army. Uh, all those stripes plastic rod. Yes, they are. The ones on top of the shoulder pads aren't, but the rest are. Uh, Blood Range Devastators, when they learn not to take heavy bolters, they always get killed wielding them. Uh, shadow Spectres are the Forge Wars. I thought they were kind of like Shadow or Ghost Spectres or something like that. Not the most super imaginative name, but yeah, it fits. Uh, love the way pizza is shooting. Um, any chance we could get more chaos space between stuff on the channel? I love the content, but I wish you could replicate it on models. Not to say you haven't done any chaos space, just wish there'd be more. I think I did five ways to convert for all of the chaos main chaos chapters, I think. Well, legions, not chapters. Um, I think I could do more, though. Definitely do more. Uh, I go craft wheel color for the cloth, right? Um, yeah, that would actually be a good point. Um, you could do craft wheel colour for the cloth. I might stick to yellow, but yeah, that'd be a good option in the future, actually. That would be a good idea. Um, red or white or black. I, well, I think I'll do that. I'll leave it for now. I think yellow might be a bit too overpowering. I think black might be the best one, actually. Thinking about it. I might have a look at some artwork to see if there's anything there. Um, Matthew Parker, is that a Banshee conversion? Yes, it is. It's based on a Howling Banshee with a few... Um, other games which are components in there along with some plastic rod. Hey Pete, do you have any videos on painting eyes? No, I don't because I struggle with the painting eyes as well. My advice is just don't bother, don't do them. Um, Chaos Cultist Kit Bashes, yes, I've done Chaos kit, Cultist Kit Bashes and I've done the five ways to convert. So I've done, I, don't, I did Night Lords, um, I did all the main ones that don't have existing models, so Night Lords. Um, can't remember any other Chaos Legions at the moment. Who else is the Night Lord? Alpha Legion. I've done Night Lords, Alpha Legion. Did five, no, I didn't do five ways to convert Alpha Legion. I'm, I did do an Alpha Legion conversion, but I don't think it did. I actually can't remember now. I genuinely can't remember. Um, Ben's tease in August. Um, Typing on the phone sucks. Yeah, it does. I was for a keyboard personally. Um, what have I done? What, what chaos conversion? I've done. I've definitely did Iron Warriors. I've done Night Lords. I've said that three times now, four times maybe. Um, Iron Warriors, Night Lords. I didn't do World Eaters because obviously that's just corn berserkers. No, I did do World Eaters actually. I tell a lie. I did do them. Um, Yeah, I completely forget which ones I've done. Alpha Legion pretends to be everyone, so you've done... There we go, perfect. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, there's someone flexing on Reddit by painting pupils, irises, veins, and all for space marines. Like, yeah, I mean, this, honestly, I think if you can do eyes, amazing, yeah, great. But if you can't do eyes, I just wouldn't bother doing them. One of the things that I read years ago was that if you actually had, let's say you've got this, you're, you're holding um, a miniature out at arm's length. I think in terms of, like, to see someone of that same kind of height, in like equivalent, it's like a Father Ted, far away, small far away uh, moment uh, here. But if someone was the equivalent size and was a distance away from you, you wouldn't actually be able to see the whites of their eyes anyway. Um, their eyes would just look as like darker spots. 
Um, there we go. We've got Juan Hidalgo miniatures in here. If you want to paint eyes, speak to ask ask Juan because he's he's so much better at painting than me. So if you want to ask painting advice, then speak to Juan. Um, thank you for joining me as well. Uh, we're doing more inquisitor conversions. Yeah, I did actually quite like my auto Chronos videos, um, but I, I got sucked in into doing more Space Marine videos again. But yeah. I do like I do quite like doing those. I might do some more for some of the more obscure orders as well. Uh, do you ever play 40k? Um, no, is the answer to that one, because I haven't had a fully built 40k army for a long time. I'm in the process of building Death God, though. Um, obviously, I'm very much looking forward to when the new Codex supplement gets finally released. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's going to be fairly soon, and I can continue building my army. I kind of didn't want to continue because I knew that they would be getting... Uh, codex fairly soon, so I thought well, I'll I'll leave them. I'll see what works well before I really commit. I think I might do some possessed though. I might add some possessed to them, just because Death Guard possessed look pretty cool in there. Uh, Zcon, uh, did you kit bash the model yourself? And if yes, what parts did you use? Yes, I did kit bash this model. Um, I will briefly go over the parts, but there will be a full guide coming on Wednesday, which I would highly recommend you watch. Not only to build up my views, but also to, um, I go in a lot more detail about how I did everything. But uh, basically, Howling Banshee basis. Um, I used, this, this is from the 40K Zangors, the chainsaw there. The, um, I can't remember what are they called? They're called something. Um, Manda Blasters, they are from some Splinter Pistols from Dark Elder Splinter Pistols and the Stripes here are just plastic rods. Oh, and the shoulder pads are Van Saar shoulder pads as well. Yeah, basic rundown. Views for the views, God likes the throne, the algorithm. Yeah, subs for the subs throne. Um, I quite like how that yellow's turned out actually. It's a nice base colour. What was your first miniature? It was a Lord of the Rings goblin. It was the first model I ever did, one of the little plastic goblins. I painted it using only um, Chaos Black, Goblin Green, and whatever the old metal was. What was the old metal called? The old Games Workshop metal. It was like chain mail, I think it was. Yeah, that was that was like the, the first model I ever did. Oh, and it had like a little bit of brown, like, score. what was it, um, what was it brown called? Really old brown colour, anyway. Um, oh, we've got Chris as well. Hi, Chris. How, how, how's it going? Um, we met at the, the contrast weekend. God, that was a while ago now. It's like nearly two years ago now. Uh, good to see you. Um, is it complete? There's more to add. This is complete. It's obviously just getting painted. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the conversion done there. I've got some, uh, I've got some, some well-known uh, YouTubers popping up in today's today's stream. Nice to see everyone.
do the undercloth, uh, undersuit cloth and dreads black, yellow stripes and the dreads, Irie Rastafari, Ben Ives, what did Ben Ives say? I'm very proud, or you madman, and I'm dad. First tried painting them. I'm kind of going through the comments here back. Let's let's go back through. Chris, very cool conversion. Yeah, I've read that one. Okay. All this looking at an Aldor makes me want to go and buy a miniature and paint it up properly in Syme hand colours. Yeah, I, Aldor looks actually quite nice. I haven't really done much Aldor. I used to have a friend who collected Aldor when I first started painting Warhammer. I painted a few of his, and they're actually quite nice models to paint. They're very... Um, they're quite intricate, but because of the way their armour is, it looks very... It's very simple to paint them. Um, so it's like a beginner army they're actually fairly straightforward to paint in my opinion but the models aren't great they're a bit old well, i think the um the stock collecting set's quite good though you get quite a lot of of the more modern more modern the more up-to-date sculpts in there of the uh the, the wraith lord and the wraith knights things like that um, where are we going back? Um, uh, duh, 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 duh. First try painting them 17 years ago it was crap then. Let's go right now. Deserves another attempt. I think, yes, I do agree. Um, better bring your A game, Pete. Don't snap anything. I know that's the, to be honest, this one has, um, I don't think I've pinned anything on this one, so there's a good chance that this could get snapped off. And it's a very, I mean, you can see there how kind of bendy the whole model is, so I've got to be careful there. Um, if you just create more content for a system other than games workshop which direction would you go I think you did some bolt action at one point yeah I still do bolt action um, and probably will continue to do bolt action war game stuff uh, I also do a lot of battlefront stuff as well so yeah uh, Juan, and, Juan I'm just a spy because I might do some stream myself and I'm gathering intelligence so yeah so this is what not to do in a stream is to um overly focus on painting the model and completely forget to speak because I do that all the time. I'm just sat here just in complete silence just as I'm focusing on a really awkward highlight. I thought I would forget to answer the comments and have to go back through the whole list of them. Um, model looks great. Thank you very much. Red highlights around the weapons for Kane. Um, third time to chop. Hope he sees it. Rubicus Gaming. The head kind of looks like a predator head without the more. Yeah, it does actually. It does actually look a bit like a predator, especially the the dreadlocks as well, yeah. I actually prefer the old, old Aldar to the new ones. Controversial stuff there, Juan, but I mean, you do some really nice work on that, on the um, on the Aldar model that you did recently. Some really, like, fantastic shading on that one. Really liked how bright it was. Classic Aldar stuff as well. Um... Uh, Chris, um, I like this model, makes me wish there were more of this. Are you doing just the one model or making a unit? Uh, so the intention here was just to kind of just do the one model for conversion. Um, mainly because if I plan to do more Aspect Warriors, chances are I might use the Howling Branches set as a base again. So I don't want to use, uh, have to go and buy another set. But yeah, maybe, maybe in the future if I wanted to do some, um, just click some Aldar. I say maybe, but it'll never happen. But yeah, it would be nice to do a full unit of them. Um, Mills Miniatures, evening mate uh, really liked your tutorial on the ACW infantry from Warlord, thank you very much there is another one coming as well, I don't know if I should have said that but yeah there is another one coming for the confederate troops as well, quite nice painting something so different as well from regular 28mm scale, I like seeing Eldar forces being the Voltron force with a million colours, not the monochromatic armies they're encouraging, you. yeah I think that's the nice thing about Eldar because they have the aspect warriors so you can see at a glance exactly what unit is what and it don't just like not just one homogenous color um it's quite nice to have the opportunity to paint all your regular kind of uh, guardians and things like that, your um your craft world color and then you actually have your specific units as being different colors it gives you a chance to paint with different colors different techniques things like that it's all nice okay ben there's no need for that <laughs> I'm I'm actually going to officially give you one strike now, Ben. Three and you're gone. You you're banned from the stream. That's it. 
Uh, Sparks and Zeros, hi. August, hi, hello again. I could see you back. Uh, Rubicus Gaming, sorry, fourth time. Can you try and do a third party Thousand Suns using Egypt or former Loyalist Renegades, Red Corsairs, maybe? Nice idea. Um, third party Thousand Suns, yeah, there are some nice. Um, there are some nice third-party bits, actually. I think I might have some on the way. So possibly we can see in the future. Um, Sparks and Zeros. Listening to the live stream whilst updating indie game store. I work for with Warhammer Games Workshop staff. Nice. I hope I'm helping your work to go a little bit quicker. Um, I thought that was the entire aesthetic of the Strapping Scorpions, the Predator Helmets. Yeah, they have the nice kind of... Um, yeah, the old ones, I think, look quite a lot like. They have, obviously, the dreadlocks. I had to trim this away to get rid of the um, the Howling Banshee main to do these. Uh, if you read this Pete scroll up, I've been trying to send this for ages. I do apologize, Rubicus Gaming. It's a lot of comments coming through at the moment. I'm trying to read them all. Uh, what are all the aspects? I know there are Warp Spies and Striking Scorpions, but I'm not much into Eldar, and I don't know the whole range. Okay, Dire Avengers, Striking Scorpions, Warp Spiders... Dark Reapers, Swooping Hawks, there are Shadow Spectres as well, which are a Forge World only one. There are also, I think that's everyone. Have I got them all? Warp Spiders, Striking Scorpions, Howling Banshees as well, which is what the base model for this is. I think that's everyone. Dire Avengers, Dark Reapers, Howling Bunch, Swimming Horse, Fire Dragons. Oh, Fire Dragons, they're the ones I missed out, actually. Good one. Um. <laughs> forbidden Coffee. Yeah. I'm going to leave the Forbidden Coffee there for everyone to watch. Everyone to, uh, whilst I'm reading comments, you can, you can watch it slowly curdle and form. Um, Shining Spears as well. I didn't realize they were Aspect Warriors, but yeah, of course. What are your scale limits? For instance, what is the smallest and larger scales you'll be happy to um, to do? Obviously, the smaller you go, the more you don't have to paint, and the larger, the more there is. So I actually have, why have I painted? I think 32 millimeters is the, la the biggest model I've actually painted. I do have some larger scale models that I never actually got around to. Um, and I think these, either these or the wall, the battlefront models are probably the smallest scale. So as, as four scale, quite a difference in size um, fire dragons best known as primus eradicators yeah definitely stay in the green abyss watching paint dry <laughs> no, this is worse this is this is watch paint congeal and form into psychedelic shapes what does this these streams are just devolve into complete madness by by the hour mark honestly we've got we've got we've got chris in here we've got We've got Juan in here, and I completely lose the professional vibe that I've been holding on for the whole stream. Can't handle the pressure. Like I said, this is why I go quiet now because I'm concentrating on doing highlights and com completely forget to, to speak. So I think I'm going to paint them. What to paint them? I don't know. I, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint them the same way that the Striking Scorpion um, chainsaw is painted. So it's black and then there's like two little yellow diagonal stripes at the end. I think that'll look, look pretty cool. I think I'll do that with the with the cloth as well. <laughs> Less chat, more paint now, yeah. I do need to get this model done. Um, just trying to just trying to respond to everyone. Everyone who takes the time to uh, to comment and Leave a message. Just 
just got to be careful I don't just do only do um, painting and no chatting at the same time. Um, so I think I'm going to paint that yellow, that little kind of tough, just because I don't have the yellow here. It kind of, so I want it to be, I don't have the little tabs over here as well. So I'm going to paint that yellow, I think. Have you ever thought about doing a Sisters of Battle Gene Stealer cult conversion? I have not. I have not thought about that. That would be interesting to do. Kind of a a saint that's also like a a gene stealer, a gene stealer saint. That would be pretty cool. They think it's the same, but it's actually just a gene stealer. Surprise. I think that works. Yeah, okay, cool. Favourite faction in Warhammer Fantasy? I would say Bretonians, personally. So I was quite happy to see that Bretonians were getting a mention in the Old World preview that we had over Christmas. So it doesn't mean that they'll definitely be featured in there in some way, some way shape or form. We don't know if it's 28mm yet. We don't know if it's 15mm. I do hope it's 28mm, so um, we can get some old some old new men at arms new old men at arms <laughs> can you move your mic closer to your nose so we can hear you breathing please so currently I have, what, 165 viewers? I reckon if I do that, then it would probably drop down to about five viewers very quickly. So I'll try not to do that. Um, talking about snow, yeah, we had a lot of snow, actually, the last few days um, around here. It's pretty much been, snow has been everywhere for the last nearly week, I'd say, actually. There's been on and off bouts of snow. I think it started the day after Boxing Day. Which is unusual, really, because we don't often have much snow at this time of year in, in the UK. Do you ever procrastinate during a certain figure or model as you are nervous about doing it? Either you feel you couldn't do it justice or you might ruin it, especially if it was expensive. Yes, there have been models which I have converted and never finished simply because I just wasn't happy with them. Um, but yeah, there's also models that I have kind of painted, I've kind of converted and never got around to painting them. Mainly because it was kind of, I wasn't really happy with the result. I wasn't completely happy with how the model came out. So I haven't really felt confident enough in publishing them. I did, I did like a quite a big model big conversion um, a few months ago I wanted to do something big and I just didn't really think it came out great I really liked the idea and as I was doing it I was like yeah this is coming out really nicely and then when I actually finished it I was like mm, I don't really like this anymore so I never actually got around to finishing it off and getting a video out for it but it's a shame really it was quite an interesting it was like a chaos dwarf thing okay I think that's everything for the yellow mm -hmm. the so for the dreadlocks, it's there is some yellow on there, but I don't think the way I've built them it would work. Um, yeah, so there's a, usually a little bit of yellow towards the top. I haven't really got anything to paint, so I'm gonna have to leave that. Um, I'll come back and do the yellow on the chainsaw and the tabard after I've painted them black. So what? So let's go for the highlight. Let's go for some pure deep yellow here. Okay, it's getting a little bit yellow onto the palette. There. A little bit pure yellow this time. 
convert to Chaos Primarch we haven't had yet. Yes, it would be nice to do um, one of the Chaos Primarchs. I think something maybe like... I actually don't know who's dead and who's alive anymore. I know Fulgrim's still knocking around. Um, I think is Lorgard is dead. Angron is still alive, I think. Um, but you just basically she's a bloodthirster for him, wouldn't you? Um, is Conrad around, alive still? Is he around? Peter Dunn, hey, how is the painting community on YouTube? I have found Twitch a real slog, seeing as key times were taken by established painters. Um, I think it's all right. I mean, the, the streaming side of things, I've kind of... There's, there's obviously quite a lot of, um, of painting channels out there. There's a few that obviously do uh, streaming and stuff like that. But yeah, there's. I think the fact that you can obviously do the on-demand stuff as well helps because... Um, once the stream is done, obviously it just gets added to the channel, so anyone who wants to watch it back through later on can do so, and they can they can pause and stare at the forbidden coffee cup. And uh, so I think that helps with with the YouTube aspect. I know you can do that on Twitch as well, but yeah, I think Twitch is still always also mainly the uh, um, watching things live aspect is mainly the go-to thing for Twitch. But yeah, I think it's quite a nice community on here. Everyone I speak to is a bunch of great people. Commenters, YouTubers, yeah, feel good. Most of the Chaos Primarchs are still alive. I believe Conrad and Alpharius are both dead. Oh, Conrad is dead, okay. Is Lorgar still alive then? Obviously Horus is dead. Um, I didn't realize Lorgar was alive. I think Angron would need a bit more work than just a bloodthirster compete, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lorgar, Morty, Magnus, Fulgrim, Angron, all demon princes, yeah, I think they would all be. Um, Karak Kurz is not alive. Omegon is still alive. Um, So going back to Spox and Zero's comment, it's interesting enough that they've decided to set the old world as being 500 years or so before the start of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Yeah, I think this is basically, in a way, their justification for um, releasing the whole new range because they can kind of say, oh yeah, it's, it's the empire pre, um, maybe pre-industrial empire. Um, obviously, Bretonians are still knocking around. They probably haven't changed that much in the 500 years between then and the Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Although it does make it a little bit strange the fact that um, they're releasing all these games. I mentioned this before, they're releasing all these kind of Warhammer Fantasy Battle setting games of, of um, set in the old world. And then they have things like um, the, the Total War games, they have Vermintide, they have, um, what's the other one? There's a, there's a few of them that are set around that time and then when they actually finally do release the old world it's going to be set at an earlier time which is interesting so I guess it gives them more freedom with making new models I assume that's the reason why they're doing it So I should have mentioned, I'm just using this uh, yellow here just as a highlight for that uh, dark yellow that I painted, uh, mixed together in the last step and painted on. Um, same principles before, just picking out the edges using the brighter yellow. Nothing too fancy here, just to add a little bit more definition to them. To help them stand out and just give a little bit more shading to some of these areas. I 
I think from the old timeline, the return of the old world is set when the empire was massively split between split between rival elect accounts wanting to be emperor before they unite against the chaos invasion. Chaos Bane, yes, that's the one that I was thinking about. Thank you, uh, Mikhail, Michael. Um, yeah, I think that's probably why they're doing it. It gives them a little bit more scope to be a little bit more focused, maybe. Although we have seen, obviously, information about Kislev. We've seen information about some of the Empire. We've seen information about um, some High Elf stuff. So yeah, we're getting, we're getting some pretty cool stuff cropping up. It also gives them the chance to explore some characters which probably haven't already been covered in the past. Obviously, a lot of the characters from Warhammer Fantasy Battle um, wouldn't have been alive at the time. Obviously, some of the elves would have been. Um, but the human characters wouldn't have been. So it's quite an interesting take. It allows you to completely rejig the setting in that regards. The licenses who made the old Warhammer Fantasy Battle setting significantly cheaper to license than Age of Sigmar, pushing developers to pick that up over Age of Sigmar. Yeah, um, Spox and Zeros, meaning that you've got a huge audience of people wanting to get into the miniature hobby for a game that doesn't exist anymore after getting invested in the lore and visual aesthetic of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Yeah, I do agree, you know, because the thing is, this is the thing that I've always said. I think I had a discussion with someone on a stream before. Um, about this, I feel like it's a very strange thing to have to sell all these IPs. Of these, I mean, they're successful games. I mean, Vermintide has done well enough to spin off to well, Vermintide did well enough to have a sequel and then a spin off series as well, Dark Tide. And then obviously, Total Warhammer Total War is still play, it still gets updates. We've got two of those games, Chaosbane, like someone else mentioned, that's another one. We've got all these games in this Warhammer Fantasy Battle setting. People might be aware of get what Games Workshop is and, and know that they do miniatures and things like that and they come along and they want to buy some Bretonians or they want to buy some Tomb Kings and things like that and they can't can't get them because they don't exist and then they're like okay we're going to do the fantasy we're going to re reinvent the old world and then they do it 500 years before so the setting again is different so I'd, yeah it seems a bit odd it does seem a bit odd but you know I'm guessing they're making money from it so I'm just salty that I never, I never actually picked up any uh, Bretonian men at arms or Bretonian, Bretonian peasant bowmen before they got out of production. So it's probably why I'm a little bit sad about that. I think that's okay for the yellow for the time being. I might go over that with a little bit of shading later on, maybe to bring out some of the highlights a bit more. Um, yeah, so let's let's block out some of the black areas because I think um, to go to black grey or pure black here is the decision I need to make next. Uh, Max Brandt, yes, this is a conversion indeed. I'll be releasing a conversion guide for this model in few days on Wednesday hopefully if I can get it painted by then um, okay got black here oops it's not the camera okay I'm just gonna pop some pure black onto the palette it's just Vallejo black here just very nice strong pigmented paint there Box and Zeus, if you promise to do a video on painting, I'd be happy to sell you some Bretonian uh, minis. I'd have to look in what I have in the attic. Oh, I see that'd be nice to do, you know, because but I think the trouble is, I think it'd be quite it'd be quite a shame to do. I would love to have some um, Bretonian models, but if I did a painting video, I could do a painting video actually. That'd be better. I couldn't do a conversion because everyone would be like, "Well, these models are out of production. How am I supposed to get Bretonian now?" Um, but yeah, maybe. It'd be quite cool to do a painted video for some classic models. Okay, so I'm just gonna just 
just apply some black here just to make sure that it's it's a solid black color just to just because I was airbrushing I've got a feeling that maybe some areas have got overlapped so I'm just making sure everything's going back to black and I can also paint a little tabard here as well Uh, have you looked at one page rules grimdark fu future rules yet they even got space rules i have seen them um mentioned a few times i haven't actually t had a look at it though uh, but yeah maybe maybe i should check them out actually what else needs to be black on this model um the, the pistol needs to be part of that needs to be black the bits around the top here need to be black as well. <laughs> How much would people kick off if you proxy Perry's miniatures 100 years war figures for Britannians? The only trouble with that, actually, I, I really... I picked up a box of those guys um, a couple of years ago just because I really wanted some uh, some peasant bowmen. And the only trouble is the scale is slightly smaller. They are like listed as obviously 28mm in Games Workshop 28mm but they are slightly smaller which is a shame because if they... I think the closest models that I've found to the old Britannian models is some of Fireforge um, Forgotten Realms range. They have some kind of like peasants and men at arms models, which is pretty good actually. So I was going to paint the strip as well black. So let's add some black into there now before I forget. And obviously the face mask needs to be black as well. I'm a new fan of 40k after painting a space drow at 13 and I'm committing at 35 still to, uh, to continue with the faction. Um, all those beautiful many lifetimes of lore to get through. I'm uh, feeling like that guy dragging a fatty on the use of the Nash chariot. Yeah, there is just... I mean, I, I have been involved with Warhammer 40k for a long time. Um, I say long time, it's probably not very long compared to other people, but still, um, I've, I've been familiar with it for quite a while, and there's still so much stuff that I don't know, and... I get wrong and I get mixed up with. And the thing is, Games Workshop likes to retcon stuff as well, which doesn't help. So you'll think you'll know something and then they'll change the mind and suddenly it's not the same. Like, for example, take for the, the Space Gaven video that I did. A few people mentioned that they're basically just Harud. Now, I was under the assumption that Harud used to be Space Rats and then they're, they're now this like weird kind of swamp thing kind of creature. Well, apparently someone said that they got re-retconned, re ret retconned, and they're now space rats again. And it's like you can't quite know exactly what's going on because Games Workshop, just whoever their new writer is, just decides to change, change the rules on everyone. So, yeah. Time to get three D printed. Yeah, I actually have. Um, I have considered just three D printing. There are some nice three D printed um, Britonians out there. So maybe yeah, just. A, Stick to the 3D printer. Uh, Wolf Parable, what are some other favorites from fantasy series, teams, models? Would you like to paint or convert? Hmm. So 
so I did really like um, I did really like Tomb Kings, but I think a lot of their models, like the the big kind of constructs that they did, were really nice. Um, so those are the kind of old ones. But so I'm hoping that we're back now. Um, hopefully that's working. Are we going to react? Just waiting for the. Uh, there we go. I think we're back now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I have no idea what actually happened then. I just my computer just decided to just die. No, no warning. No, no error message. It just went. See you later. Just shut itself down. So, yeah, it's always good fun. About fifteen minutes before the end of a stream, and that happened. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Anyway, where were we? Um, I've I've completely lost my trail of thought. I think I was just painting the black areas of the model. I don't know what I was talking about at the time, but yeah, here we go. Let's carry on. Let's carry on for the last fifteen minutes of the stream, and get as much of this black blocked in as possible. So I think that's pretty much everywhere. I'm gonna to need to be a bit bit more careful around here. It's a little bit hard to see it on this on the camera here. Um it's quite intricate around this area here. Um there's a lot of kind of straps and various symbols, so hopefully I don't get any of these wrong. Yeah, I think that's I think that's everything black. Um, oh, the mask, that was what I was painting last time. I'm just going to check this has come back up on YouTube. Are we back? Yeah, we're working on both YouTube and Twitch. Brilliant, okay. I was kind of worried that it was only working on one of the areas there, so great. Um, we did lose a few people, but oh well, I, I guess people can't be expected to hang around just watching a black screen in the hopes that the uh, the stream will reconnect. So I'm just finishing off this little bit of uh, black around the mask there. So this is this is one of the areas that was a bit tricky to convert because the striking scorpion's mask is slightly different in terms of the faceplate as well, the way that the, the eyes and the the front part of the front segments, kind of the inlaid segment of the helmet, is um, one piece, whereas the howling benches kind of just have the grill, and that's it. So I'm kind of having to do this with paint rather than actual model. So I'm painting around the eyes and then leaving the chin to be pure black. Sorry, not pure black, green. What am I talking about? Okay. I think that's everywhere to base coat with black. I think there wasn't as many places as I thought. It's a little bit on this, a little bit here, actually. Let's make sure I catch that before I forget. And a little bit across the arm as well. I wasn't actually expecting to get much further than this step. Um, so I didn't actually decide on which colors to go for next. I'm going to have to go for them on the fly. I might just start highlighting the black areas, actually. It's probably going to be the easiest thing to do. I know exactly which color I'll be using for that, so I might as well just go straight to the highlights for that. I 
How much are those paintbrushes? Uh, seems like a comfy handle. Uh, so these are just the army painters, it's just the Wargamer Regiment one. Um, I don't know if you can see that because of the light. It's a bit kind of needs to be in shade. There we go. Can I get? It's just like completely blown out exposure. I think my um, all the settings that I added in have been lost now. It's like looking, re yeah, all the auto focus. Oh dear, terrible, terrible evening for streaming. Let's let's get us back. Um, big video. Turn off auto white balance. Perfect. Turn off auto focus. Turn off auto exposure. Drop the exposure down. And Um, yeah, so that is a Army Painter Regiment brush. Not too badly priced, actually. You can buy a set of them fairly cheaply. Um, yeah, they're pretty good brushes, to be honest. I've been using um, a Regiment brush for quite a while. The, the, kind of, the handle's a little bit strange, the, kind of the shape of it, but yeah, it does work quite nicely. Um, quite comfortable as well. One thing I noticed about the Striking Scorpion is that the leg pose is remarkably similar to Blood Bowl Alfheim Eagles. So the legs are close together, so it's difficult painting the inside of the leg. Um, yeah, actually, the, I was looking at those um, Blood Bowl sets because they they could be quite good for some future conversions. Actually, the Blood Bowl stuff I think could work. I haven't used them in future com in conversions, but I've got some ideas for some of the Orc, the new Orc. Um, Blood Bowl team at the Black Orcs, I think they are. Sure. Peter Zone, hi, sorry, what order did you paint this mini in? Undercoat black, then green, then white, then yellow. So, yeah, so I started with um, black primer and then used some like a dark green and then built that up to a lighter green for the armor. Um, the yellow was started off with, I just went with a mixture of yellow and orange and just applied that over and then highlighted with yellow. That's basically what I did there. Any advice on carving Nordic runes onto a Primus model? I tried using an X-Acto knife, but it didn't carve well. Didn't, didn't do well carving a rune. Um, I actually don't have one handy, but I would highly recommend checking out some of, I think Secret Weapon Miniatures do some brass, brass etched runes. I think Green Stuff will do some as well. A few places do them. And I would highly recommend just using those instead. They're like Nordic kind of uh, runes that you can use. And you can basically just take them off the sprue and you can just super glue them on. I would say they're much better than doing engravings. It's very difficult. If you wanted to engrave them, I would recommend applying a very thin layer of putty and then carving into that rather than try and carve directly into the plastic. It will be difficult otherwise. So, one thing I noticed as well, if I just look at one of the original models, one thing that these guys also have is the sole of their boots or shoes or whatever they are is also black, so I need to make sure I remember to tackle that, otherwise it'll look odd. side as well After I spent time highlighting the edge of that sole, now let's paint it black. It's always the case. So I think this will probably finish off the stream here. I think we'll get this last bit of the sole done. Um, and that's a good point to finish because I'll be moving on to different colors next, so. Yeah, I think that'll do for this uh, this stream today. It's been nice to uh, have a stream again, 
2021, the first stream of the year. Hopefully this year will be a bit better for everyone. Maybe not just yet, but maybe in a few months' time things will start to improve. But in the meantime, we can all keep hobbying, keep painting, keep working through that backlog. Or adding to it. But yeah, I think that is where I'm going to leave that to, uh, that painting for today. Um, you will see the finished model on Wednesday, hopefully. Once it's all finished, I will be doing the conversion guy. So you can see exactly how I went about building this guy. Girl, sorry. And um, yeah, that's going to be Wednesday's videos. Friday video, as I mentioned, is going to be a, hopefully, it might be something else, I might, I'm not sure, a little bit of an Age of Sigmar conversion. Something a little bit different. Um, I will be doing some more uh, Space Marine stuff in the future, so it's not going to be completely out of the um, out of what I'm saying. I'm not completely finishing doing Space Marine videos. I will still be doing home brews. I'll be still doing some um, well known chapter conversions as well. Um, sorry for anyone who I didn't I wasn't able to reply to a comment. I really do enjoy replying and chatting with you guys. It's great fun. It's why I do these streams. Um, thank you to everyone who joined me on Twitch as well as YouTube and yeah if you haven't done so already I haven't mentioned Discord so if you're on YouTube then check out the uh, Discord the link is in the description below and if you are a channel member if you subscribe if you um, use my affiliates links if you support me on Patreon thank you thank you very much because everything you do helps me to try out these kind of conversions and buy the kits that are needed for these things and you know sometimes they don't work and it's, it's good to kind of have that financial support from you guys that just allows me to build these guys. So thank you very much. And yeah, um, I think that's going to be that, it for today. I will see you all on Wednesday. I'm not sure when my next stream will be, but join me for the actual uh, painting guide, uh, well, conversion guide for this video. So yeah, thanks everyone. Until next time. <laughs>